Hey, it's Lower for Low Notes Tech, back at you with another Tech Take, and today I'm giving you my three week review of the Samsung HWQ990C, an 11.1 four channel soundbar with wireless surround rear speakers, subwoofer, and Dolby Atmos compatibility. Now, I'll just let you know from the start, I am completely in love with my Q990C. For the past three weeks, I've been scouring streaming services for Dolby Atmos content, getting my fill of that truly immersive sound. Movies sound great, games sound ridiculous, and music downright insane. Now, if you're in the market looking for one, this truly is a no-brainer. Just do it. I can't recommend this enough. Okay, enough with the gushing. Let's get straight to the experiences. First of all, this soundbar is a big boy. I mean, when my wife saw it, she gave me that look like, what do you think you're putting that? And at that moment, I knew I made the right choice. The only thing, and well, this isn't the fault of the soundbar, it covers almost an inch of the bottom of my TV. Now I'm using a 65 inch LG C1 OLED. And while this is not an issue for movies that go into letterbox, it does block some of the screen with 16.9 movies and games. Solution, well, put the TV on the wall or maybe a riser for the TV. But to be honest, I don't mind because again, the Q990C sounds awesome. Understand that I'm coming from a Sony all-in-one 5.1 surround sound Blu-ray system where each 5.1 channel is wired. So having speakers running around the house was something that my wife was not having especially having ugly speaker stands right behind the couch. So I had two things going against me. 12 year old system, which I mean, it still sounded pretty good, but I needed wireless speakers for the convenience. I think you would agree that I was overdue for an upgrade. Well, in the soundbar itself, you have your center, left and right channel. Your wides that shoot off sound to the side to widen the sound field, but also bounces off the walls back into your ears. There's also the up firing drivers that, well, in theory, give you a height experience to add to the bubble of the sound. I'll talk a little more about the in theory part a bit later on in the video. Then you have your rears, which I ended up mounting on the wall behind my listening position. Of course, they act as your normal left and right rear channel, but also to add to the widening effect, they have drivers firing to the sides, hitting the walls to have the sound bounce off and then again back to your ears. Same for the up firing drivers as well. All of this to create that sweet bubble sound experience that we're all trying to get. Then you have your subwoofer. Now I'm not getting to specs or measurements, but the subwoofer, it rocks. I mean, it, it, it rattles stuff. Okay, so you may have noticed that my living room space it's not exactly ideal for a full encompassing surround sound experience. Why? Well, it's not a perfect square with even length walls. I mean, I've got a huge dead spot to the right of my viewing position and my ceilings are 10 feet tall. And because where my rear surround speakers are installed, the wides don't really get a chance to reflect off the wall the way they were designed to. Well, that being said, because I understand the limitations of my living room layout, that I may not be getting the full complete experience, let me be clear, I'm still getting a fantastic experience. The way I compensate is through the app. You can connect your Q990C to the app to get full control of it. What I ended up doing because of the height of the ceilings, I set my front up firing drivers to plus five. Because of the extended wall to the right of my listening position, I set the wide firing drivers to plus six. With my rears, I set the left and right channel to plus two because of the distance it is away from my seating position. I set the rear tops to plus six because of the distance from me and because of the height of the ceilings. For the rear sides, plus six. Again, the distance from my listening position, but also because it's right in that corner of the wall. So I figured, well, maybe if it's louder, it will help give me that bubble of sound. Now, Take these settings with a grain of salt. This is what I found out that works best for me and my setup. After many, many, many times tinkering. And if you're watching this, I'm guessing you know what that's like. Now, I did get a decibel reader with the intent to make sure everything was balanced, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm just going by what sounds right for now. Okay, enough of the settings. Let's get back to the sound. Dolby Atmos is 
the real deal if I haven't gotten that across yet. It makes watching movies I've already seen a treat to watch. Movies like Mad Max Fury Road sound amazing in the sandstorm. The Greatest Showman sounds and feels like I'm really in the big top. And action movies like Godzilla vs. Kong just make the house rumble with sound coming everywhere. Do I feel the height sensation? Yes, but to be honest, it's not amazing. Again, I think it's because of my setup. But do I get it? No, it's, it's more like, oh yeah, I, I hear it. Let's talk about gaming. Gaming is ridiculous, especially on the Xbox Series X with games that specifically have Dolby Atmos. Gears of War and oh man, Forza Horizon sound incredible. The experience is unreal and insanely immersive. This is what you want to show off. I mean, yeah, you can show movie scenes, but games, man, don't forget about the games. Also on the Series X, it does have the Dolby app where you can try out various Dolby Vision and Atmos demos since this was made specifically to show off your Atmos system. And what an incredible experience. <laughs> To be honest, you can never know how a movie is mixing their Atmos track. I mean, some movies can sound amazing and some, well, it can sound very over, it can sound very underwhelming. Not every Atmos mix is mind blowing. Well, the Xbox Dolby app takes advantage of it all. And even though I know my setup isn't ideal, the demos show that the Q990C is for real. Okay, music. To be honest, before getting the system, I heard that this was a weak point of the 990C, but honestly, I don't know what they were talking about. I sent this bad boy to surround for a party that I had recently, and everyone was like, oh snap. Because of the sound enveloping the room, this thing had everyone impressed and dancing. And that's what you want from a piece of new gear, right? All right, my final thoughts. I think you can tell the Q990C is a monster, but let me share with you my cons with a system like this. First of all, the power cords. I don't know, what a joke. The power cords are short. Like I think maybe three feet and, and that's, that's pretty short when it comes to an entertainment center. I would suggest getting longer power cords for the rears, uh, depending on how you wanna set this up. Next, the soundbar does not support HDMI 2.1. So that means no 4K 120 through the soundbar itself. I have my Q990C connected to the eARC port on my TV and I feed sound directly from the TV to the soundbar. In short, if you want Dolby Vision from your Blu-ray or 4K 120, have your PS5 or your Xbox going to your TV and then have your TV from the ARC, part, ARC port going directly to your soundbar. All right, the LED display. It's tiny. I mean, I don't, don't, I don't know if I need a bigger display, but what is there is disappointing. And last, well, not really a fault of the Q990C, but since you don't have dedicated channels to surround yourself with, the layout of your place may expose dead spots in your experience. But like I said before, I still enjoyed every moment of it. All right, hope this video helped you out. Enjoy. As always, I'll leave links in the description down below so you can pick up your own Q990C. Hey guys, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button so don't miss out on future videos. Hit that like button if you like what's going on here and also ding that notification so you can be notified for future videos as well. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.